In the video game industry, Blizzard Entertainment is a trailblazer. They're the company that brought competitive gaming to the world stage. Games like StarCraft were paramount to the growth and legitimization of professional esports. Warcraft 3 modders gave birth to Dota, and Hearthstone brought digital card gaming to the masses. Their most recent endeavor, the Overwatch League, has set the industry standard for what pro esports should strive to emulate with a global league of franchise teams and regularly sold out stadiums. However, not all of Blizzard's ventures have rewarded them with media deals and unanimous acclaim. Sometimes, even the best isn't good enough. And in this video, we'll be taking a look at one of Blizzard's biggest investments, which never took off as they had hoped. This is the story of Heroes of the Storm. It is a rare thing in eSports or any sports indeed. I have no chill. What Dynasty has been accomplished here. Man, can you believe these Heroes games? of the Storm has been getting a lot of attention. Multiplayer online battle arena games, or MOBAs, are one of the biggest genres in all of esports. Two of the quote-unquote big four fall into this category and regularly hold massive tournaments boasting six-figure prize pools and an audience in the millions. When MOBAs were first on the rise, just about every developer was trying to break into the market. Wargaming Seattle released Demigod in 2009, S2 Games released Heroes of New Earth in 2010, the same year as Uber Games' Monday Night Combat, Awesome Knots, Bloodline Champions, Vainglory. Titles were coming out and falling to obscurity left, right, and center. And several games were abandoned when things didn't look to be going well. Turbine's DC Universe-themed Infinite Crisis never made it out of beta. Electronic Arts' Dawngate was dropped by the publisher near the end of 2014. And this, along with countless mobile adaptations and spin-off titles in North America as well as Asia, resulted in a period of time where just about every publisher was pushing out some half-baked MOBA attempt, only to cut support shortly thereafter. But not Blizzard. They were a company that had years of experience across a slew of genres, along with the resources and cult following that would allow them to muscle their way into the MOBA market. But it was going to be an uphill battle. League of Legends released in 2009, Dota 2 in 2013. Even lesser known titles like Smite, which came out in 2014, were already gaining momentum. Blizzard was late to the party, and Heroes of the Storm didn't enter open beta until May of 2015. Basically, I started playing Heroes of the Storm since the alpha. Um, That's Mark Elhaim Leonardo previously a professional StarCraft II player, and a HOTS player for OSD. I initially played it because it was a MOBA that I was interested in because it was Blizzard related. I love Blizzard characters. I loved StarCraft, WarCraft, Diablo, and Here's the Storm was literally just the perfect MOBA for my gaming interests. Heroes of the Storm was meant to bring together the Blizzard extended universe. Diablo, StarCraft, and Overwatch made up its character pool, and in an effort to appeal to a wider audience, Heroes of the Storm removed many of the more tedious elements that were staples of other MOBA games. This included taking out the item shop and equipment builds, promoting players to focus on team fighting and strategy instead. It aimed to be more accessible to casual gamers, those who might be overwhelmed by the steep learning curves of Dota 2 and League of Legends. But this design choice wasn't exactly sustainable for long-term success. One of the main reasons that esports stagnate and die is when a skill ceiling is reached. Essentially, games have the potential to be solved. The simpler the game, the easier it is for the meta to come to its logical conclusion. Take the board game Connect 4, for example. In Connect 4, the player who goes first will always be able to force a win by playing their first piece in the middle column, and they will always lose if they place their first piece in the outer four columns. Because the game has been mathematically solved, there is no way to push the game's strategy further, and the game loses its competitive appeal. This is why games like League of Legends are constantly being updated and new characters being added. An ever-shifting meta means that gameplay does not stay the same for too long. Figuring out how to rework item builds or change team compositions prevents the game from becoming stale. 
No one knows the exact answer of how to win, and there remains room for experimentation and theory crafting. This is not to say that Heroes didn't change. It did. A lot, in fact. Through new characters being added and balance patches, Heroes kept up enough variants to keep people interested. But the removal of many traditional MOBA mechanics, like last hitting and shopping for items, reduced the variance in the game. In other MOBAs, um, like such as Dota 2 and League of Legends, you can have certain like lane matchups that are not favored, but as, um, as the game goes on, um, heroes like gain items and they scale, and they actually can win matchups even if, though they're not initially um, favored. And in Heroes of the Storm, it's very start to finish. Like your, your hero versus another hero doesn't really impact that much as, um, as the game goes on. The talent system that Heroes of the Storm did have the talents didn't really matter that much in my opinion. Some matchups mattered, but for the most part, it didn't make a dynamic change to the gameplay. This reduced volatility made the game easier to play for newcomers, but far more stagnant at the higher levels. Blizzard striving to keep the game accessible to a casual audience ended up hurting their esports aspirations. But Heroes of the Storm didn't flounder just because it was simpler than other titles on the market. Sure. It might have been put at a disadvantage because there was less variation, but HOT still managed to build a pretty big following. Throughout my years of playing competitively, I think the, um, Here's the Storm is actually the most beautiful game when it comes to macro. Once you start pretty much the draft in Here's the Storm at a competitive level, there's so many macro elements you need to understand, and you need to be able to understand what to do at almost every single point in time. And it was just super fast paced, and yet to keep up with everything. The real issue was the divide between the casual and the professional levels of play. The primary game mode in Heroes of the Storm is Quick Match, which lets players instantly join up and start playing. The main idea in Quick Match is that regardless of team composition, players are able to pick what hero they want and start finding success. But the professional level looked absolutely nothing like what the average gamer was experiencing. Heroes were constantly being played in unorthodox roles, and characters like Asmodan and Sylvanas, two of the most powerful lane pushers in Quick Match, saw little to no play at the top level. I think the biggest thing when it comes to the meta of Quick Match versus competitive play, um, even in like competitive ranked, people do don't really understand what's going on because the game doesn't really have a good way of uh, showing people how the game functions. They kind of just like, hey, here's an objective, fight over it. But sometimes like in competitive, you don't even fight over any objectives whatsoever because you have a composition that's not made to fight whatsoever. This disconnect was problematic because it meant that the casual audience Blizzard was trying to cater to would be confused and feel disconnected from the top level of professional play. Still, Blizzard had faith that it would be able to break into the MOBA market. In the months after its release, significant investments were funneled into Heroes of the Storm's professional scene, in the hopes that they'd be able to create a league that could put HOTS ahead of its competitors. Blizzard had begun pushing for the game to be recognized as an esports since before it was even released. Big name organizations like Fnatic, Evil Geniuses, and Team Liquid bought into the hype and trust in Blizzard and began signing players to compete in various grassroots tournaments and leagues similar to ESL. In 2015, Blizzard partnered with ESPN to produce a collegiate tournament series called Heroes of the Dorm, which sought to award full scholarships to the winning teams. Near the end of 2015, the World Championship for HOTS was held at BlizzCon and saw Cloud9 walking away with $1.2 million in prize money. It was an explosive start for the new game. Being on national television was relatively uncharted territory for esports, and huge prize pools were already drawing interest from organizations like Dignitas, Gen.G, and Fnatic. The following year, in 2016, the Heroes of the Storm Global Championship, or HGC, launched as a full-fledged esports league. In each region, eight teams would play throughout the week, with top teams qualifying for playoffs and international events, while the bottom teams battled against amateur organizations with the threat of relegation on the line. It's also important to note that Blizzard provided a salary to all HGC players. With HGC, we were paid a 
salary of a uh, minimum 20,000 US. And obviously on top of that, if we had the sponsors and stuff like that, they, that would add on. So with all this developer support, why isn't Heroes of the Storm a headlining esport today? Well, one glaring area of concern was the league's lack of security for investors. Before franchises became a thing, the NA LCS and HGC both used a model that would have bottom end teams facing relegation and have to fight for the right to retain their spot in subsequent seasons. Because team performance could directly impact an organization's profitability, it was risky for investors to put their trust in such a new game. Before the HGC even started, top organizations saw this as a problem, and teams like Na'Vi, Virtus Pro, and Cloud9 dropped their HOTS rosters early on. But despite issues with the league's format, Heroes of the Storm was still a relatively big success. But if HOTS was going to compete with its opponents, the game would have to undergo some serious changes. And in April 2017, that's exactly what happened. Following months of debate, trial and error, and communication with professional players who knew the game inside and out, HOTS 2.0 was released, boasting a much needed overhaul to the player progression system, loot boxes, and the addition of Overwatch's D.Va. Just about every major issue with the game had been upgraded and improved upon, with rebalanced gameplay refreshing the meta and overall pacing of matches. The 2018 season saw highlights airing on ESPN, amazing pieces of media like the Oracle series, and it looked like Heroes of the Storm was going to explode in 2019. Following the 2018 HGC season, players and fans alike were anticipating a media flurry of hype videos, developer updates, and character announcements. Instead, they were met with weeks of radio silence. We got like a, I don't know, it was like a three month like omen of like waiting if we were going to have HGC or not. We ended up seeing rumors at BlizzCon that HGC was going to continue. In the, one of their panels, they even had HGC um, written on their, uh, on their image and we we're just like, oh, hey, HGC is going to be back. Cool. Activision Blizzard was going through a massive wave of layoffs, auditing the company and deciding what was and what wasn't worth their time and money. Despite a historic year for Heroes of the Storm, the game continued to see a decline in viewership as casual gamers moved on to newer titles like PUBG and Fortnite. It soon became apparent that HOTS 2.0 came a little bit too late, and the HGC was just too big of an investment to sustain. So on December 13th, 2018, Blizzard announced that they would be dialing back its support of Heroes of the Storm in 2019. Though never explicitly stated, this announcement was the proverbial pulling of the plug. Everybody who's part of an HGC team basically just got an email. There's also a public statement. So I've tried to actually record my reaction to this a few times. <laughs> it's not going well. Inside of Blizzard, this section at least, is a complete mess. Effectively, since there was no other esports pretty much, uh, Heroes Esports is kind of at an end. Wait a minute! I just thought you said we're setting up the game for long-term sustainability. There are wheels turning, and then they just hit the brakes on it. Which is just like, it's absolute bullshit. It's so awful. You know, it feels like today I lost a part of me. Blizzard can keep touting what a difficult decision this was for them all they want, but the ones facing real difficulty in this situation are the hundreds of people who are out of jobs or who have been put in a tough financial and professional position. At least back in the days when I grew up in esports, you could tell the, the health of an esports scene by how many organizations wanted to be a part of it and create a tournament. Now that there's more control by developers to start their own tournaments, it's mm -hmm. very, um, it's very much developer-driven. Just a shift in the way that things are run. So it's not so much only anymore about do people love a game, but it's about how much is a developer supporting a scene. Uh, and generally that will be based off of their profits, which makes sense because companies have to make money. Um, and now, since they are not making enough profit, they're ending it. In one day, 
an entire community was thrown to the curb. It's not unusual for esports to fizzle out and die, but for many, their livelihoods were predicated on HGC 2019. To have that taken away in one dev post is devastating. There were rumors starting that HGC was going to be canceled for next year. And obviously everyone is super duper scared because yeah, that this is our job, right? We didn't have any warning whatsoever that that anything was going to happen. Because usually like if something happens, you're kind of notice of uh, you're notified ahead of time, like two, three weeks ahead of time to be able to make adjustments to your life. And yeah, we got the letter at the same time as the public. Countless players were all but promised financial security in the 2019 league. But suddenly, none of those plans they had made mattered. I've been playing Heroes for so long. This was supposed to be my life for 2019. I kind of planned my life ahead a little bit on how I wanted to do things with HEC. I was planning to play like for one or two years and then move on from it. But overall, like a lot of people suffered from it. Um, people lost their job, like that's that was my job at the time. Even the game's own developers were taken aback by the decision. Kale Milker, the game's production director, posted on the Battle.net forum, quote, I'm sad because I love this team and this game that we've built together, with all of you. And this past year has been such a great one for Heroes of the Storm. The HGC had its best year yet, and I was so looking forward to the 2019 season. On the game side, we've had a steady stream of some of the most sought after heroes, amazing themed events, and impactful reworks. We also made meaningful progress on improving core systems and features across the game. We truly hit our stride in 2018, so I'm disappointed that some of the exciting plans we had for 2019 will have to change." End quote. In the wake of that fateful news on December 13th, Rosters were disbanded and players left with nowhere to go. While efforts are being made to revive the game through grassroots events and third-party leagues, none of these can compare to the support and security that was afforded by HGC. Although the game will continue to be updated, the development team has taken a huge hit, with many team members being moved to other projects. And with the HGC dissolved, the future of competitive HOTS is uncertain and it will likely never reach the heights that many thought it could. There are organizations, here's Hearth, um, here's Lounge, and here's Hype, trying to support the scene. Um, for people that are still interested in playing and playing the game at a high level, quote unquote, I don't know where it's gonna go from there because they're definitely going to need help financially to make the game appealing for people that want to start a new game and play. Moving forward though, I don't, personally, I don't really see a future for Heroes of the Storm because other genres like uh, Battle Royale and the auto chess fad that's coming out right now are taking over the gaming industry in my opinion. And people are more excited for those types of games instead of MOBAs. So unfortunately, I don't think Heroes will do well in the future. Maybe it will, who knows? I'd rather not it die, but it is what it is, and people have to move on, like I do.